Beirut is a hostage drama set in Beirut in 1982 about an American diplomat who returns to that city to rescue a friend who's been taken hostage by a faction of the PLO. Uh, <laughs> so it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, comedy. Uh, Tony, I'm wondering what was the inspiration behind the story? I wrote this script in 1991, the original script, and I waited 30 years for it to get made and rewrote it again, touched it up when we, when, we, when we went into production. So I've been sitting with it for a long time. It was a really interesting thriller idea back in 1991 in a really interesting setting in a really pregnant moment in time. And 30 years later, it seems to have a deeper resonance and it seems to have more... Um, a lot of things happened. 1982 got a lot more sexy. It's a lot sexier in 1982 than it was in 1992. Haters are in, right? And, yeah. the, and the Middle East is so, has become so fragmented. It's, it's such a disaster. And this is, this is a movie about a, a place at the, the, beginning the beginning of the disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of piggybacking on what Tony said, like, it's interesting to think about a script that was written quite a while ago kind of having newfound resonance and, and really meaning something and, and really kind of digging into like, how did we get here in 2018? How did we get here? What happened? And what happened was kind of the events of the 70s and 80s that the, movies talk, the movie talks about. Because it is a period piece and you guys were filming in Morocco, I'm wondering, do you guys have any particularly memorable moments from set or unexpected things that happened? Uh, you know, shooting on, shooting on location, especially shooting on location in in Morocco or North Africa or wherever. We had three languages on set, basically. So it would go from English to French to Arabic, from Arabic to French to English. So it was, it was a, a fun telephone game of like, hey, can I, do we need to stand here? Like, oh, we'll stand here. Like, all of a sudden, like, a tank rolls in. You're like, who asked for the tank? Like, <laughs> like sorry, how does that? Oh, well, it sounds a lot like tank in Arabic. I mean, we had, a, we had a, an amazingly uh, hardworking crew that, that that, that really came came to play, and when you see the film, it's it's so beautifully done. We all everybody was working at a very high capacity, and it was really nice. And Brad, when the trailer first debuted, there was some critical backlash to the lack of Lebanese or Middle Eastern representation in that small bit yeah. of the film. Was proper cultural representation a big concern for you when making the movie? Absolutely. I mean, we, as I hope to do in all my movies. We aimed for a kind of realism that, that was reflected on the page and in Tony's story. And, um, you know, we hired as many, you know, uh, local people as we could, because that's what you do when you shoot Morocco, you hire the locals. Um, and we brought in as many uh, of actors that we could from wherever we could to make it, give it that realism. But, you know, in terms of bringing in uh, Lebanese actors, we, we did try that. Um, it's just function of budget, function of uh, the logistics of it. Um, it's I also, feel we ended up with a pretty damn good cast. It's also not a documentary. I mean, you have to understand, like, right. you know, Casablanca was not shot in Casablanca. You know, Star Wars wasn't shot on Dagobah. Like, um, it, it, it wasn't. That's, Trust that's me. True. Really? Oh my gosh, was it? But, Rogue One was shot on Tatooine. I think a lot of the, I think, I'd, I'd be really curious to see what happens after people see the movie. I, I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised. Um, I mean, the, the movie play, paints a very accurate portrayal of a very ugly, political period of time where no one's behavior was yeah, really no. on point. <laughs>